Well, hello everyone. Um, today is February 12, 2013, and what this video is going to show is uh, demonstrate how to calculate the cost of equity or the required rate of return on equity for a firm using the capital asset pricing model and specifically the security market line uh, of the capital asset pricing model. Um, the, my company, my target company is Cracker Barrel. Um, as I talked about in class, and what I'm going to do is is show you the inputs for that and how to calculate things like beta, and um, calculate the or determine what the risk-free rate is. Um, so so that's where we'll start. Um, the calculation for uh, the capital asset pricing model says that the cost of equity. cost of equity for a firm, in other words, the required rate of return on the firm's stock, is equal to the risk-free rate oops, plus the beta for the firm multiplied by the market risk premium. The market risk premium is the uh, additional return that a stockholder requires for the average stock in the marketplace above the risk-free rate. So it's it's the incentive to invest in a stock rather than in a government bond. Uh, the beta is a measure of the firm's risk, and, and specifically a firm's market risk. And so a beta of one says it's it's average. It, it's the return for it's the risk of the market, the risk of the average stock. If it's higher than one, it's riskier than average. If it's lower than one, it's lower than average. Uh, the first thing we'll start off with is determining what the risk-free rate is. Uh, for this, I'm going to use the 20-year, uh, the yield on the, the current 20-year U.S. Treasury, just to be consistent with your textbook. So for the risk-free rate, we're going to use the, the yield on the 20-year U.S. Treasury. So I'm going to go out here. There's a number of places to look up uh, this information. In class, sometimes I'll talk about using um, Bloomberg. However, Bloomberg, I notice, doesn't, doesn't have on it the 20-year Treasury. It only has the 10-year and the 30-year. So we're actually going to go to the Treasury Department website, Treasury dot gov. If you go out here, you can go to the Resource Center and um, looking for it, Data and Chart Center down here. And then go to Daily Treasury Long-Term Rates. And we're looking at the 20-year, so this is the Treasury 20-year current maturity. You can see they also have a long-term composite index. They're, they're fairly similar. Either one would be appropriate. The reason why we're using a long-term return is that these are stocks, and we expect to hold them for a long period of time, and we expect that most investors do as well. So the, the current maturity uh, for a 20-year Treasury, U.S. Treasury, is 2.78%. So that's what we're going to use for our risk-free rate, 2.78%. And then we need to figure up the beta. Now we can look at Yahoo Finance and we can look at Google Finance and determine what those betas are, but they're going to be different. And we're going to talk more in class about different ways to calculate beta. But for the purposes of this example, we're going to use a five-year monthly return beta. And so I'm going to download that and I'm going to describe how we calculate that. Um, the beta, go to a new sheet here, uh, is the result of a regression, uh, and the regression is of what's called what's called the market model. So the market model says uh, that we regress the returns for the firm on some intercept, um, usually referred to as alpha, plus. beta, this is the coefficient that we're calculating, and then we're regressing this on the returns for the market. Right. 
So we're going to run this regression over a uh, 60 month period of time, the last 60 months. So in order to do this, I need the information I need is the return for the market and the returns for the firm. So again, I'm going to go out here, go to finance.yahoo.com. And for the returns for the market, I'm going to use the S&P 500 index. It's a common index to use. It's uh, the largest 500 market cap stocks uh, in the U.S. Um, so it's a fairly common uh, proxy for the market. Uh, the, the ticker symbol you're, you'll want to use on Yahoo Finance is the up, up caret. So that's uh, Shift 6 GSPC. So as you see here, this is the S&P 500. Okay. Press enter. I need historical prices. And we're going to use monthly uh, returns. So I want to go back five years. So I'm going to go back to February 11th, 2008. I'm going to change this to February 11th, too, because the day isn't over today. So we can't have today's price in there get prices. And then at the bottom I'm going to select download to spreadsheet. And what I want out of this is just the dates and the adjusted close. We use the adjusted close because it uh, corrects for dividends paid so it adds in that additional return we get for that and also corrects for stock splits and and stock dividends. So I'm going to select those, copy them, go back to my original spreadsheet. So these are my market returns, or my market prices, I apologize. Um, the next column over I'm going to put in my uh, returns for Cracker Barrel at Cracker Barrel. So again, I'll go out. I can cheat a little bit here. The symbol for Cracker Barrel, I can highlight the stock ticker that's up in the URL bar. The symbol for, for Cracker Barrel, CRBL. Oh, or not. Um, let's see. CBRL, I apologize. So I'll go back out here. You can highlight CBRL. There we go. So Cracker Barrel, it's got two, uh, February 11, 2008 to February 11, 2013. Monthly prices. Scroll to the bottom. Download to spreadsheet. I'm going to do the same thing here. I just want the adjusted close price. I don't need the dates because I already have those on my other spreadsheet. I'm going to highlight the adjusted close prices. Go back out to my original spreadsheet. Paste those in. I'm going to put CBRL for Cracker Barrel. And now I want to calculate the returns. Um, I'll describe why I'm doing this in class, but I'm going to use a geometric return rather than an, an, an arithmetic return. So in order to do that, I put in the function ln for the natural log. So I put in ln parentheses, the most recent price divided by the prior price. So for the market I have uh, between January 2nd, 2013 and February 1st, 2013, I have a return of 1.253%. Pull that over to Cracker Barrel, it's 1.07%. 
going to scroll that down all the way. Uh, you don't need to do the last uh, line there, the last row, because it, it'll show up as an error. So once I have that information, uh, I'm going to calculate a few different statistics from this. So one way to make life easy is just to highlight the returns for, for the market and go up here in this area and name it. I'm going to name mine MKTRET for market return. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Put in CBRL RET for Cracker Barrel return. So there's a few uh, statistics I can calculate here. The two main ones are going to be the beta, and then I also want to see the R square, and I'll explain why that is when I calculate it. So I want the beta, and for this we put in equal slope. Our known Ys are our returns for the firm, so it's going to be CBRL return. And our known Xs are the return for the market, so that's going to be MKTRET. So we get a beta of 0.85. So it's a little less risky than the average stock, and that makes sense. Uh, this is a, a family restaurant. It's been around for a long time. It doesn't fluctuate with the economy and with economic macroeconomic factors as much as the average firm would, and that makes complete sense. The second number that I want to look at is the R-square. What the R-square does is it explains the, um, or it shows the percentage of the variation in Cracker Barrel's returns that are explained by the returns for the market. It, it kind of is an indication of, of the quality of the fit of the model. One, an R-square of one means that the returns for the market completely explain the returns for Cracker Barrel. Zero means that there's no, no relationship there. Um, but typically for the average firm we see an R-square of about 30. 30% uh, 30 of the returns of the variation of the returns are explained in the variation of the returns from the market. So in this case I'm going to put in equals RSQ. Our known Ys again are the returns for Cracker Barrel. Our known Xs are the return for the market. And I get an R square here of 0.2467. So a little lower than average. Um, so about 25% of the returns for Cracker Barrel are explained by the returns in the market. So you know what's my interpretation of this, it, it's generally pretty consistent that the capital asset pricing model doesn't do a great job of um, explaining or predicting returns for a firm. However, many companies use it. Uh, there's different theoretical reasons on why or in, and practical reasons why. And what we're going to eventually do later on is expand this out um, into the Fama French 3 factor model and, and other different models but the skill set's the same. So I've calculated the R square, I've calculated the beta. I'm going to use that beta now in my equation here. So my beta is equal to 0.851827 and my um, market risk premium The market risk premium I'm going to use is actually from your textbook. It's 4.5%. Um, if you look in your textbooks, it's on page 48. Midway down, it says uh, you, there's a table um, that says United States geometric mean. Um, again, and we'll talk why in class why we use a geometric mean rather than an arithmetic mean. Uh, but it says the premium relative to bonds is 4.5%. Um, because we're using a long-term interest rate, we're using the 20-year the uh, treasury bond, we'll use the corresponding uh, market risk premium for that. So our cost of equity using this model is equal to 2.78 plus the beta multiplied by the market risk premium, or 6.61 percent. All right. Uh, so that, that ends this tutorial on how to calculate the uh, cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model. Uh, this is going to be one of your assignments for 
the equity valuation class. If you have any questions, please let me know. I apologize for my stuffiness. I've taken on a head cold. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And good luck. Thanks.